Hey, everyone. Happy to have you here for another episode of Legacy Matters. Today, as usual, we will talk about whatever comes up with a slight leaning toward discussions of preserving your legacy, preparing for things to come, and sharing stories we find amusing. Here we are. Here we legacy are. Matters. It's just Sam and Jim today because Sarah is out. Oh, I thought you were going to say sucks. No. No. We would never. I'm oh kidding. Oh, the look on his face. Wow. I'm totally teasing. I Sorry, love Sarah. She's great. Sarah. <laughs> no, she can't always be here. She lives uh, far enough away and she's got to. Yeah. She's doing her thing. She's doing her thing. But uh, in her absence, and we always miss her when she's not here for these, mm-hmm. uh, but we should thank our listeners. Thank for... you for tuning in. Thank you for listening to our podcast. God, I love it when you say tuning in because I still, I, I see like little Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. With That's the, the way the we're AM rolling. Dial, like, we're t- 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 tuning in. See, I don't even realize I say that. Okay. No, I know. It's just, yeah. it's old school. I know. I'm old. Um, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for listening. We, we appreciate all the comments. We appreciate the uh, subscribers. We appreciate the non-subscribers. At this point, what do we care? Right? What are it's we all good. Do? Just we got a lot of people in the, and people are commenting, so that is good. I'm going to just give a quick nod here. It's Monday, and it is October, and it is rainy today. It, but it, it is warm. Oh, yeah, but it was pretty pretty bleak today. It was. It was pretty pretty bleak. Uh, Marty said something about getting two and a half inches already midway through the day of rain today. Really? That's what he said. Hmm. Out in well, Golden Valley. Anyway, it's it's the wettest year on record in Minnesota. That's right. I can't get my roof done. Yeah, everything's wet. So you're uh, coming over this weekend to roof my <laughs> garage with me. That's <laughs> just I keeping it real. <laughs> All right. Can't wait. All right, and we All have right. a guest now. Oh, we do. Let's All right. introduce our guest. All right. You want Sam? You want me? No? Okay, we've got Terry Walsh of the uh, Belfast Cowboys, I believe. Correct? Terry, Correct. welcome. Hi, thanks. Thanks, thanks for, for coming me. in. Um. Yeah, and I, I warned you I don't do a ton of research. I, when I say of the Belfast Cowboys, the, I know of that band. Uh, I do not, I just don't follow music well enough, or I didn't when, you know, when I was younger. Like, uh, how long has this, been, this band been around? It will be 18 years on St. Patrick's Day of 2020. Ooh, nice. So it will be legal then. Oh, you know. Well, legal for married. some things. Yeah, right. Yeah. Be able to be drafted. Yeah. Okay. As yep. a band. All right. <laughs> what, what sort of forces would you fight as the Belfast Cowboys? <laughs> if you um, uh, boredom. Ah. Um, I don't know what else. Evil? Evil, yeah. yeah. Evil, that's, that's a good Boredom is good, though. I <laughs> that mean, is good. That's, that's better than yeah. just our, yeah. our All right, so battle. you guys have been playing for a long time, and I'm familiar with your band. Yes. To some degree. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you guys, well, why don't you describe Van Morrison? Yeah, we uh, we started out, I, um, it was 2001, and I was working at a um, computer warehouse up in Plymouth, making the commute from East St. Paul to Plymouth, uh, Holy every smokes. day, hit back and forth, and God, that's like yeah, from he double hockey sticks to the other he double. Exactly, hockey. I'm yeah. just kidding. It was I love rough. both. I love both Plymouth and <laughs> and it wasn't that great of a job either. But um, <laughs> Plymouth, it was. I kind of got railroaded out of the job one day before my one year anniversary when I would have been, I would have had an, a 401k and an additional week of paid vacation, and they called me into the office and. And told me I was done. It was a bad deal. And did they do it because of that? I mean, uh, do you suppose- well, I have no proof of that, but the unemployment office agreed with me that it was pretty fishy. So, can, can you name the place in Plymouth? Um, I don't even yeah, think they're them. there anymore. <laughs> yeah. Why? Well, Go ahead. I grew dude. up Ed in that neighborhood. They were called EdTech. Okay. A crappy and thing to do to. A yeah. Like, yeah. It was. It was really, really shady. It was kind of a shady. Everything you take yes. to Plymouth, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but we lost all of Plymouth. Then uh, less than a week <laughs> no after different. that happened, my wife. We found out we were pregnant for the first time. Oh. So, um, my then wife Shannon, and so I was reeling. Oh, and we also had a trip to Italy planned. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so not only did I not have any income, 
and uh, had a baby on the way that for the first time, which freaked me out, but I lost my <laughs> drinking partner for, you know, in Italy. We were yep. going for all the wine and Shannon was taking a writing class and kind of put a damper on things there. Um, <laughs> and so I, I was telling my troubles to my good friend, Brian Swanson, who's a booking agent. And he's, uh, he said, I think it's time we follow up on that Van Morrison idea of yours. And I had always thought, it would be great to have a, a band with a horn section, and it just seemed like a pipe dream at the time. And I also had, uh, I, I I was leery about um, selling out, you know. Yeah. You know, I didn't want to be in a cover band. And, so were you in a band then, yeah, at that time? Yes. Well, I had, I had been in a band uh, called Terry Walsh and 2 AM uh, in the 80s and 90s. We put out a couple of CDs, and... In about 1997, it fell apart. Our bassist stopped answering the phone, uh, and <laughs> figured that was good. that was a bad sign. Yep. Um, and I went on tour with Slim Dunlap. I played the bass with him uh, for a couple of weeks. We opened up for Sunbolt, and that was really that was great. Um, but came home and was kind of floundering, and I didn't. Didn't know what I was going to do. I almost sold all my sold all my music gear and tried to grow up. But <laughs> <laughs> fortunately, Brian called me and said, "Hey, you want to uh, come and play with us every Thursday night uh, in a go nowhere, do nothing rock and roll band?" And it sounded perfect <laughs> like, to me. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. So we wound up playing together for you know four or five years before the Cowboys ever came along. We were called we called ourselves Bowling Trophy. And okay. uh, and just we barely played any gigs, but we we would meet and drink beer, and we'd learn songs that we loved. You know, just instead of learning songs to try and please other people, we we would bring songs. Hey, let's learn this. And right. and I was with you know Dave Kirby, who's uh, still a member of the band. I just played with him on on Saturday night in Medina, and uh, Rodney Too Good. Really, his last name too good. Um, he was our bassist for many years, and then he and his wife moved to Oregon, where they're thriving now and riding bikes all the time. And he'll stop by and play bass with us every once in a while when he comes back into town. But um, the four of us in 2001, we just after that the job loss and the pregnancy happened, we started hammering out these Van Morrison songs. We had already played a few, a couple of them anyway. Uh, and then we put together a list of 30 or 40 songs. And once we were confident enough in that, we added uh, my old friend Joe Lascota, who played in 2 a.m. as the keyboardist. And then, but the key was uh, Brian knew Vic Villari, who's a badass horn player, uh, sax player, and flute, and and uh, he plays the clarinet too, and. And he had all the connections. Horn players are like a, a completely different world, you know. Yeah. I it played in bands for many years, you know. I've been playing since I was playing in the bar since I was eighteen, and um, uh, I didn't meet. I didn't know any horn players at all. And and Vic opened up the whole world. Oh yeah, we've got this guy and this guy and this guy. We could ask. So, um. We put it together and we, we brought the horns in. Vic wrote out the charts and they came in for one rehearsal. And uh, I'll never forget it. The first time we played, I think the first song we played was Van Morrison's Into the Mystic. And when I heard those horns join in, <laughs> it was it was like ugh, realizing a dream and, and just the beauty of it. And hearing how those horns uh, made the song, it just was wow. I thought, ooh, we might have something here. <clears throat> so Brian, um, we had he had a gig set up at the old 400 bar. You remember the 400? Oh, yeah. And um, it was on St. Patrick's Day 2002. And like a week before the gig, Brian got an offer to move to California and join Monterey Peninsula artist booking agency and funny uh they actually book van morrison himself so uh 
he couldn't couldn't pass it up so that turned out to be brian's last official gig with the band and it looked like it was going to be the death knell for us too but i thought you know we've gone through all this work and uh there just happened to be at that one show this great guitarist who i had seen playing with dave kirby's band uh dan kowalki and he was at our first show and when i found out brian was leaving he was uh, an obvious first choice and he said yeah yeah I'll, I'll play with you guys and he's been here ever since and uh yeah he was just on the gig in medina on saturday night too so <laughs> so how many people do you play for when you play out in medina and stuff well there we were open, opening for uh, martin zeller's neil diamond okay yeah, i saw thing. it yeah so yeah, yeah um yeah you know he'll draw a thousand people and yeah it's uh it's great it's it's really fun playing out there the crew takes good care of us and it's a big stage great sound system and and people we don't normally play for you don't have to go that far out of the city to reach a different audience it's really funny you know you go play in waconia and you'll you'll see very few regulars and and all these new people that are interested it's um so it's it's good to play around but we we're really lucky we don't have to don't have to leave town to be able to play right yeah you know i'm actually i'm i'm well, you guys always draw a big crowd almost always yeah yeah yeah, yeah you do <laughs> there i are, mean yeah i mean compared to 2 a.m days we definitely do yeah <laughs> there were there were times we would be playing in the seventh street entry to you know four people and then my sister would leave and there'd be three people <laughs> on <it. laughs> so right uh, I've been yeah, there for lucky those us. types of shows. Oh yeah. man, it's, but that's it's still brutal. fun. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's, tough. it's tough. When you're when you get all ready for it, I mean, because that was, I'd be just calling up Steve McClellan. Please, Steve, give us a gig. And, okay, you can play first on a Monday night. You know, eight thirty start or something. And, yes, 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 we've got a gig, and <laughs> it'd be our first gig in six months, and we'd just practice like mad dogs, and and then. Uh, and you show up and wait for the crowd, and then you'd start playing, and you'd wait for the crowd, and, <laughs> and you get done, and then the crowd would start coming in for the next band. Aww. It was rough, man. It was it was it so was not uh, not very much. So of a you had this Van Morrison thing in the back of your mind for a while. How, yeah. So, so it, well, let me just backtrack. Are you from <clears throat> where are you from, Terry? Right here, Minneapolis. Minneapolis, mm-hmm. and then you moved to St. Paul. Yep, and then back to Minneapolis. I Ooh, really moved yeah. around a lot. In <laughs> yeah, 1988, I lived in New York City for four months, and then that's the only time I've lived anywhere other than okay. the Twin Cities. Yep. Where in Minneapolis did you? South, uh, okay. out by Washburn. Oh, yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. sure. That's sort of my stopping grounds right now. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we still play out there at Driftwood Char Bar every Tuesday night. as uh, It's called oh. St. Dominic's Trio. Uh-huh. We're actually... We're never a trio. We're a four piece or a five piece or Yeah, I noticed that. More. It's always referred to as the trio and I'm like, yeah. I don't get that part. You know? <laughs> it's really a stupid name. Uh <laughs> the only reason that and I named it on a <clears throat> I had to come up with something the night before uh, our first show and <laughs> it's just a, a a reference to Van Morrison's album Saint Dominic's Preview. Okay. Uh, which is my favorite Van album. And um and at the time, we were actually a trio, but then I, I, I just needed to differentiate between that band and the band with the horns, because I didn't want to do a bait and switch on people where they'd show up and hmm. expect to hear the horn section there. So there had to be a line drawn. And I also honestly didn't think that <laughs> that the, the smaller band would be uh, as busy as we have been over the years. and. Probably should have changed the name 10 years ago, but never did. One, well, but now it's recognizable. So. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. but um, St. Yeah. Dominic's, is that right? St. Dominic's Trio. Yeah, yeah but St. Dominic's you know, quartet or quintuplet doesn't <laughs> no, flow doesn't, like does, Trio does. It, right. right, Trio works. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. So, so were you in the Van Morrison when you were younger? Um, so, <clears throat> not as much. Um, like in high school, I was into Springsteen and... and uh, and the Rolling Stones and Elvis Costello. Um, I remember reading this, reading a book about Springsteen, and and they would, um, 
they'd compare him to Van Morrison a lot. And I thought, ah, Van Morrison, I've got to give him a try. And and I remember putting on Astral Weeks when I was in high school, the Van Morrison album. And, and uh, you know, it's kind of revered as his greatest album. And I put it on and I was like, man, what? You know, <laughs> this isn't that great. You give me something that sounds like Springsteen. <laughs> right. It wasn't a, a very apt comparison, I thought. But um, it, it took me a while. That was... You know, maybe 10 years later, um, my sister, who was the one that was at the gig earlier um, that I referred to, <laughs> she had a mixtape that a friend of hers had made. It was um, 90 minutes of all Van Morrison songs. And that's a great way to learn him because he's got so many albums. It's really daunting. Right. And um, I listened to that and went wild. I mean, in 90 minutes, you'll get, you get some great songs out of that. And I learned a lot. And then, uh, but it was. I mean, there was no Spotify then. There was no uh, right. no streaming, and so I went and took a job at a record store. Um, what, what record store? It was called Great American Music. Oh yeah, it was um, like a door down but near the Uptown Bar. Yep. Um, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, there was the Suburban World Theater, and then our little record store. It was a stupid record store. Um, they made us wear ties. <laughs> <laughs> we were just like, what? Why do you even have a record store where people wear ties? It's kind of... Anyway, but... Um, and what year is this? This is... It was when I came home from New York, so it was like 89 or 90. Okay, yep. Um, and the only reason I went through... Well, I needed a job, first of all, and it, but it barely paid anything. But I went in there with the objective of learning Van Morrison's catalog and Bob Dylan's catalog because they were they're both similar in the way that they both had so many albums and and I knew I liked them both but I I wanted to delve into the into the uh the albums a lot more than the ones I knew already and so it worked out um so you got a job at a record store to to get deeper into Van Morrison's yeah. and Bob Dylan's catalogs, yeah. absolutely, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and just to kind of immerse myself. Otherwise, you'd have to buy all those albums. Exactly, you know? you mean right? You can't I mean, go find friends who have like. Well, and my brothers, my two older brothers, had had huge record collections. Yeah. I mean, anything, especially Jay, my older brother, he had, uh, he, he still has the records. Um, but yeah, I would I would spend a lot of time at his house with the TDK SA ninety cassettes. Oh God, I told I know exactly what yeah. you're talking about. <laughs> one you, album you record, on one side, yep, and, yeah. and you're recording off like I would I would make my tapes off of albums. Exactly. You know, yeah, yeah. The TDK SA <laughs> ninety. Yeah, yeah. That's that was, a, that was my that's drug solid, of choice at solid. the time. Yeah. I think I've got one in my uh, tape deck over there, <laughs> but that's got bad music on it. <laughs> Docking. <laughs> <laughs> Jim's got a little different taste in music. Well, um, yes no, and I mean, no. Yes and no. A varying I, I have to say, now. Van Morrison is someone that that it 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 really not until my adulthood, mm -hmm. you know. Well, um, that happens. Yeah, and then I was like, "Holy shit, who is this?" Yeah, and and <laughs> but the horns, I mean, like all of that's like Chicago. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't really get into Chicago mm -hmm. until later too, and now I'm like, God, it's so complicated, it's so th you know layered. Yeah, that it's like, wow. Look at you, you're all serious. Yeah, I like yeah. it. It's good. <laughs> it, it's great. So, but I I get a kick out of the just sort of I'm I'm a little younger. I think, you know. You look uh, older. I look older because I'm on Not gray. really, you don't. Nah, whatever. <laughs> but I, I'm just, I aged prematurely. Um, <laughs> no. But, I mean, I remember, you know, just certainly the, the 80s and 90s, I, I remember these well, you know, even the early 80s. That makes uh, one of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I can, so so you would get the record was there a direct output from the record player to the tape? Like, were you recording directly, or were you recording in front of a speaker? I'm, I, oh, I can't, no. you, you'd record directly. Yeah, yeah, yeah you I could mean, record directly from the yeah. album to the tape. Yeah. You are young, aren't you? Yeah, well, because yeah. I remember. <laughs> yeah, well, that's... but when I was when I was real young, uh, putting together like if, if there was tapes. a song, a new song on whether it was early MTV or on the radio that you really wanted, 
if you had the right equipment, you were you were recording directly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you couldn't do that, you were you would live with the recorded from the speaker to the thing. <laughs> so. Do you so know what I'm that, talking about? Well, uh, well oh, yeah. I yeah. can actually, yes. Yeah. So I, when I was really young, and yeah. I mean, you know, this is they gave you this the is before one. the TDK, you know, 90, right? right? You know, that was the quality. That was mm -hmm. like, so you're spending the bucks, right. you know? Uh, and that's the tape itself, That's the right? tape itself, yep. yep. Yep, and, I remember uh, TDK tapes. Right, you right. Know. But I mean, I remember, though, at, at one point making a tape you know, and just putting it up to the speaker because I didn't have oh, yeah. the actual setup. So I, I'd yeah. be listening to like KQ or something and mm -hmm. I'd be like... The Midnight Album Hour. Right. I can't wait till whatever song comes on, you know, right. and then I'd record it, you know, and and, yeah. and I would have that then, you when, know, I was like, all right, I got my tune, exactly. you know? Well, I did that all the time. We had, uh, first of all, my brother Jay would record off of the radio like, like you were doing with a microphone. Yeah. And it sounded horrible. Oh, yeah. yeah. Terrible. But terrible. the big breakthrough was when my brother Jimmy and I each kicked in $10 and my dad paid $20 <laughs> and he bought us a tape recorder with a radio built right in. Yeah. Oh. <gasps> yeah. Yes. You know? That was big time. And it was, I, I mean, it was so cool. We were it was just like high tech. <laughs> right. We used to sit there and wait with your fingers on play and record, waiting oh my for the God, song yes, to come yes, out. That's yes. what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right. Here it comes. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, whatever song it would be. Because they wouldn't yeah. give you very much warning. Liked, oh, no, they'd, they'd no. talk over the start of the song. Yeah. Too, oh, so. that drove me crazy. Yeah. I'd be like, no, no, no. <laughs> you know? That's why FM was so great because they would usually, here's, you know, the Rolling Stones, enjoy. Yeah, and then I'll, <laughs> nice, yeah. nice, yeah. yeah. There you go. And then you'd just be, got it. And yep. then you'd fr freeze in time, too. Oh, you Don't make a quiet. move, yes. because yeah, it, would, right. it yeah. would pick up every, any, any little, little thing sound, in the background. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so think, I mean, so we, you know, th that's my era, too. I remember yeah. this stuff. Yeah. Uh, but think of... Think of kind of like how fundamentally and monumentally things have changed oh, from oh yeah. that period of time to now. Well, now I'm thinking, Terry, of you like getting your job at Great American Music, mm -hmm. right? You're, you're going in there, and it's downtown. Yeah, uh, uptown. Or uptown, you know, yep. which was totally cool and oh, edgy. Yeah. And like, you know, it was like where you work. I'm yeah. sure everyone's like, well, you work, th you work there, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, that was a that was a cool time to be in Uptown. It really was. I didn't know it at the time, but it really was. Yeah. Uh, what do you know in the moment? Right. You know? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Whoever knows what, what's cool. I guess I'm better at appreciating it now. Good. Like, like that Driftwood Char Bar, man, that place is cool. It, yeah. As long yeah. as the city doesn't come in and put meters on Nicollet Avenue. Right. And I really... It, oh, cause my that's, God. I hope they don't do that. At the Uptown, it, it kind of... I mean, you used to be able to park on Hennepin Avenue... Right yes. outside the bar. Yep. I and, worked in Filio. And they had a... Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and, I mean, honestly, all of that parking... The lack of parking killed it. Yeah. You, yeah. When I, I first it. started working there, and I didn't work there nearly as long as my wife. But, uh, you know, we you would drive around the block, find a spot. Right. Yeah. And then once Easily. it got to be not that, mm -hmm. it changed. The it dynamic did. dynamic changed. It completely changed it. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah. Well, uh, we're gonna we're gonna take a, a short break. We're gonna take a break. I'm getting the signal. <laughs> we're gonna take a short break. We'll come back in a few minutes. All right. Today's show is brought to you by the Andalin app, a first of its kind digital legacy preservation app that allows you to digitally attach photos, videos, and audio recordings to the places and objects you love. Imagine hearing your grandmother's voice telling the stories of your family heirlooms. Preserve your memories, prepare for the future, and share with those you love. Andolin, available in the App Store and Google Play. Visit andolin.app for more information. Need some help with a construction project? Looking for thoughtful design and honest answers about what is possible and what is not? Kinetic Design Build is a full-service boutique remodeler, servicing residential and commercial clients in the Twin Cities. Design and build with purpose. Visit kineticdesignbuild.com to request a consultation. Packing for a trip? Let Pack Simply give you a little help by delivering travel-safe products directly to your door in an airport security-safe pouch. 
unbelievably easy and surprisingly simple. Make your life easier. Visit PackSimply.com. Interested in art? James Holmberg is both an artist and an art consultant. His strong connections in the Minnesota art world give him a unique perspective on the talented pool of artists from our region. Let James guide you to an original work that will come alive in your home. Visit jamesholmberg.com to find out more. All right. Do you want to go on a wilderness adventure with me, Sam? Or maybe you know a group of kids who could benefit from an extended break from their electronics. Or maybe you just need a break from those kids. Visit earthedfound.org for more information about how to get started. For information about becoming a sponsor of Legacy Matters, please visit LegacyMattersPodcast.com. Are we back? Yeah. Okay. We're back. We're back. Uh, we don't need to make the joke that we always make about our little our little digital breaks here, but like when you're listening to this, whether we take a break or not just doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't we matter. always make yeah. a big deal out of it. Like, <laughs> hey, thanks for staying with us through the break. <laughs> right. We really right. appreciate it. Well, we do it. have commercials during the break, though. <laughs> That's true. So we do we do throw something in their face, and, you know, they're like, oh, God. Right. I, I mean, me, I always skip through the commercials. Right. So do I. Bink, I know right where that, I'm, I'm too lazy to do it. I always listen is. to it. I've heard male chimp a billion times <laughs> by now. That's, that's the big one. That Rock, is the big uh, one, rocket, yeah. Rocket mortgage and right, uh, right. Mail Squarespace. I yeah, mean, oh, all and, that. Uh, the, the job recruiter place. Was oh, it? indeed. Oh, that's right, the or job. No, Stubhub is yes. another one I hear. Oh, yes. no, but there's another recruiter one. Yeah. It's not Indeed. No, all right, so the, I, Indeed's I, out there. I, 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 so I... We we mentioned something, but before we get into that, American music, I mean, I remember that record store. I mean, so do you have a favorite sort of like, what was one of the favorite things that happened in that mu- music store? Because that, well, was, that was the day, man. The um, Uptown. It was, uh, it was really corporate, though, and we weren't supposed to play. We were supposed to play these things called play tapes that had this DJ sounding voice, and he would say, this is what's hot and what's now at Great American Music. And then they'd play, you know, Mariah Carey or something like that. It was, it was awful. And mm. and um, sorry, Mariah fans, but... Um, <laughs> oh, I have a... Oh, Mariah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, it, I finally broke the rules so much that they, they figured out a way that they could let me play music that I wanted to play in the store. And it, it was... There were these... It was called Waterfall Cassettes, and they were cheaper cassettes of older albums. And I could pick anything in the store that was priced, uh, I think, like five ninety nine or six ninety nine, and I could put them. I had a, like a display that I could change weekly, and I would have twelve different titles in there that uh, would be on display because they were cheaper. And and any of those that I picked, we could play in the store. And it, I had a cool general manager that finally said, okay, you can do this. And so I would have, you know, three Bob Dylans in there, four Van Morrisons and, and whatnot. And then we'd, I've always wanted to hear this album. Let's put it on. And and the fun thing about that was it, whenever I would play a Van Morrison album, people would come up to the counter and say, what is this? Yeah. What is this? And And it happened so frequently that I thought that's where I got the idea, you know, like, Wow, this resonates with a lot of people, and and there's a familiarity about it. Uh, he's had so many songs that have been in the public public consciousness, but if you're not a fan of him, you don't realize how many of his songs you actually kind of I'm know. That way with yeah. like Seeger, I'm that way with a, a bunch of artists that CCR. Yeah, they, yep. yeah, they it's, played you know. all through my youth. Mm-hmm. I recognize every song. I'm like, I don't know. It's one of those bands. Yeah, that this, you right. know, like, right. Yep. I couldn't tell you. So that's that's where I, I really started thinking, huh? That's uh... and and that was so important. So I grew up in Crystal. Mm-hmm. which was next to the Wax Museum. Do you remember that place? Well, funny you mention that, that they moved me from one great American music to the another. Uh, the old Wax Museum on Lake Street uh, turned into a great American music. Yep. And now it's a furniture store. Right. Like but right. 
Yeah, and that's that was even cooler. We didn't have to wear ties there, from what I remember. Yeah, but yeah, but Great the, American but Music the, was like a national chain. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But the record store was. I mean, that's how you found new music. I mean, you go in there and you just that be like, square joint. you know, just yeah. walk in there and and. But you had to you, you had to become friends with the people that work exactly. at the record store right. and be like, I mean, that's where I discovered. You know, I remember my friend Vic working at. Uh, at the Wax Museum, and when Jane's Addiction came out, he was like, you got to check this out. Mm-hmm. And it was nothing shocking. And I was like staring at the album cover, and I was like, okay, I, I guess I'll just buy it because I can't listen to right. it first, yeah. but I trust you, mm-hmm. and I trust your opinion, you know. And then and it, it was probably like the it melted my brain. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, it was and big little, bucks. And little Jimmy... Yeah, I did only had like 16 bucks to drink with that week. Yeah, some exactly. Local <laughs> right. Shit. I was on my bike. Yeah. I rode over there. And got, got it. You know, not much has changed, Terry. Well, <laughs> so, except for I drive now. Yeah. So. <laughs> did you? But yeah. This one too. Yeah. But I mean, but that's true, though. So you probably became friends with, I mean, you probably had your regular people that were coming in. Yeah. People like, you know, turn me on to something. You know, what, what? What's going on? And and were you that guy? Were you were you helping people find good music? Yeah, yeah. I like to think so. There yeah. was a guy that we we had you know different departments within that relatively small store, and uh, there was a classical section. And my friend Wally, he knew all about. Uh, somebody would come up with a classical question. Go talk to Wally. He'll he'll help you out. And he would point the rock people at me, and and there were other. My friend Craig, he had you know kind of. Um, more uh, edgier new wave stuff and mm. and uh uh it, you know we all it was really, i have craig and i are still good friends and I, I still have a couple of friends that you know i see regularly because of that store it was a what a great place to work i i mean after you get past the corporate ties and things right so, so yeah. at that point though you started to familiarize yourself with all of the van morrison mm-hmm. library yep and that, so this is this is a long, this is a journey. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, and somewhere along the line, uh, you know, I, I hear, <laughs> I remember hearing tapes of of the band I was in when I was eighteen, and I sound like I'm trying to sing like Mick Jagger, and I, I wasn't consciously doing that, but we were doing a lot of Rolling Stone songs, and I would. That's, who yeah. I listened to a lot, and it just came out that way. And then I think the same thing happened with Van, where I was, you know, I listened to him so much that I mm-hmm. started singing the songs like that uh, subconsciously. And and um, then people said, "You kind of sound like Van Morrison, really." Um. So at, at some point, I just well, after the after the job loss and and. <laughs> <laughs> I find the birth of your this, first child. Yeah, yeah. but that's a but that's a fighting. quite a leap, you know. Like, hey, it looks like you're looks like you need something to do and make money. So let's do a. Ba- I mean, that's like a really. If I've learned nothing from from having so many musicians in on this show, I mean, it it is impossible to keep a musician from wanting to continue to be a musician as far as I well can tell. Gra- as as i always say it grabs you yeah you know yeah and once it's that's what hold, it seems like yeah anyway. like the, the the stories are varied but it's never it's never like oh and then everything was easy right you know? like, <laughs> yeah. then i made all the money i ever needed to make right. and everything got really easy and right and i was home all the time and my kids were happy oh, and my wife yeah. was so, happy so what was the turning point you think i mean can you remember the I'm first still waiting for it <laughs> really cuz <laughs> no, i mean no, no, no. It, it seems like you're you know I, I, yeah, you guys are I, definitely i i mean i'm still working a day job though it's but that's you know i've got a couple of kids so i need more money if i if i didn't have the kids <laughs> you say I, I might be able to you know, maybe come sleep on your couch there and and right. and, uh, well, you, and live like that. I have three of them myself know? too, and they ruined everything. I love them. <laughs> I love them so much. Oh, they're the greatest. I, yeah, but. I wouldn't wouldn't trade them for anything. But <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, they, as far as money goes, they're they're expensive. Kids are expensive. <laughs> Turns out another human yeah. being. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gotta, gotta, all their little right. needs. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. So, um, no, I have nothing to complain about compared to most musicians in town. I'm really lucky. I can, I mean, we've played for the last 10, 
15 years, averaging around 120 shows a year. And, um, you know, compare that to getting a gig once every six months. And, right. Yeah. Boy, I'm a lucky guy. It's, um, it's so, really great. So, how, how do you keep it fresh? How do you, you know? Keep learning new songs. Yep. Um, and, and they're complicated. Sometimes, some more than others. Also, um, not taking ourselves too seriously. I mean, on Tuesday nights at the Driftwood, we screw around, and 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 uh, people will throw out an idea of a song, and we'll just kind of remember it, and we'll we'll try it, and we'll get maybe sixty percent of it, and the crowd thinks it's hilarious, so they'll they'll be up for it, you know. Right. And yeah, that's fun though. Trying to remember what we played last week that was new for the first time. <laughs> oh, oh, I know. Uh, the Buckinghams, uh, Don't You Care, and uh, The Knickerbockers, Lies. We, we tried both of those songs just like, eh. Dan, our guitarist, brought them, and, and okay, we'll give it a shot. And, and uh, yeah, I don't know the lyrics to all those songs, but I can, I can make up lyrics you, pretty You can quickly. kind of yeah. improv it. Sometimes I'll just say, <laughs> blah, 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 yeah. blah. And they, they don't mind. They just think it's funny. So mix those in with songs you actually know, and it can be a pretty entertaining night. So yeah. that's how we keep it fresh. We also don't do set lists anymore. When we first started, I used to make out meticulous set lists and try to, you know, pace it like that. Nope. Now I, now I'll say, okay, let's start with this, this, and this, and then we go from there. And people yell out song ideas, and we'll sometimes jump on them and. And that it's I try to entertain the band as much as the audience sometimes, mm-hmm. just to keep them happy, and I think it's working. Is it a fairly regular crowd? Is it is a lot of the same folks every Tuesday? Um, yeah, on Tuesdays it is. Yeah, um, the full band shows. Uh, well, there you get, uh, you know, pretty wide variety. Yeah, uh, sure. We do have our regulars, though. Thank goodness. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely a bigger audience, and and you see a lot of people that'll come in maybe once every, you know, three or four shows. So, while we're on break, you mentioned the fact that did Van Morrison try to put a stop? Did yeah. you try to put, yeah. put the guy wash on we, you guys? One of the times we were actually <laughs> actually traveling, we were um, we were playing a show at BB King's in Times Square, um, and it was all set up for. It was like a Van Morrison's birthday celebration, and the bar contacted me, and they didn't pay us all that much money, but it was enough to, you know, make it. Make everybody in the band said, "Yeah, let's go to New York," you know. And um, so we had it all set up, and the bar started promoting it, and I get this email from a guy who's calling himself the Internet Sheriff. <laughs> this is like maybe eight or nine years ago. I can't remember. Okay, but so um, an email. Yeah. Yeah, the and, internet sheriff. And the the bar freaked, and they were going to cancel the show, and we were like, no, no. And because they took this seriously? They, oh, yeah. They they didn't want to be sued. And Is this a real thing, the internet yeah, sheriff? Yeah, yeah. I looked him up, and I, I saw a bunch of people complaining about the internet sheriff. He was, I don't know if he's hired by artists to just watch out for their stuff online, um, but that's what he was doing, and he was he was threatening, and said we couldn't perform under the name the Belfast Cowboys. And I was like, well, you know, we are the Belfast Cowboys. We have been since 2002. We put out, I think we had already put out a CD at that point. And um, uh, so it was it was a problem. The bar just said, no, nope, you've got to either change your name or we've got to cancel the gig. So we did that one show as the Cowfast Bellboys. And, okay. And... Went to New York and had a great time. <laughs> and then... Um, that gets you around that. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah. yeah. Well, it doesn't do much for the name, name recognition no. when you have to change the name. Right. So we came home from that, and I, I went and filed a trademark application. And six months later, we got approval, won the thing, and never heard from the internet sheriff again. So, That guy was 
bogus, I think. Yeah. I don't think he was. I no? Think, I think he was, God, you, I think real he was legit. You don't want to tick him off. What if he hears this? Then he's going to be all over us, Jim. It's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Sorry, dude. Oh, he was a great guy. The it internet like sheriff. Very, Sorry, very internet nice sheriff. Guy. <laughs> well, internet sheriff, I mean, how, what would even prompt you to open the email? Uh... It, I think the bar was the first one to get spooked by it, and and you know they were contacted, and uh-huh. so I had to deal with that. I right. was more worried about pissing off the bar than yeah, they, of course. I, I, I bet yeah. Van never heard anything about it. Um, no, but it's funny. I I actually met Van Morrison this past summer um, through uh, the kindness of uh, Billy Bragg, who uh, I've yep. known for thirty years, and and. Billy, when Billy Bragg was here, he played with us at the Driftwood at, um, last spring. And, nice. um, and then he did a three, three night run at the fine line. And we, we were downstairs in the dressing room chatting with him. And, and um, we'd been down there for about a half an hour talking and, and uh, saying our goodbyes. We had our coats on and he goes, oh, I'm doing a show with Van, you know. It's like, what? <laughs> really? Because he had it, Billy Bragg had just written this skiffle book, and and they're doing a um, in July they they were doing a show uh, for the 65th anniversary of the recording of Rock Island Line, um, and which is it's like the beginning of skiffle, according to Billy. And and Van was a part of the show, and he said, he said, yeah. And, he, and I said, when is it? And he looks at his phone. It's July 13th. And I went, huh? And my friends, and my girlfriend Amber were, was there, and, and my friend Paul and Elaine, they were there, and they all just, you've got to go, you've got to go. And Billy looks at me and says, "I'll get you in." <laughs> <laughs> so I was looking at flights the next day, and it was, it just happened to be a weekend when I, I had kept it clear for a trip with my kids. I was able to move that a month ahead. Yeah, forget them. <laughs> no, I couldn't couldn't do that. But I was able to clear out another weekend in August for them. But um, yeah, I booked the flight, flew to London, and Billy Bragg told everybody I was his sound tech, and so I got to stand on the stage and watch Van do his sound check, which was mind blowing. I'm standing with Billy Bragg on my left and Leo Sayer on my right. right. Oh my god, that's awesome. <laughs> it was. It That's was awesome. surreal, and then he gets done, and Billy goes, "Hey, this is my uh, sound tech, Terry." You know, and but and I shook his hand and said, "Pleasure," <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I said. Ah, yeah, yeah. That's perfect. Uh, but it, Billy told me, you know, it, you can't can't mention your band. He he's, he says he's got a memory like an elephant, and you, you had a little run in with him. He remembered, you know, you had a run in <laughs> oh, with him with shit. The, it, with the internet police with the internet guy, sheriff. Yeah, yeah. All right. And, well, <laughs> but so made it through. Didn't don't didn't piss get off, sued, man. Didn't piss him off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so funny. After I'll never forget. After I shook his hand and he turned away, he turns around and he looked at me like, "You got? Anything? I know you. you. Got anything else to say, fucker? You know?" <laughs> <laughs> and, and I went, "Oh, oh no, I don't." Uh, sorry, Mom. I, I did swear. I hope you didn't hear that. Oh, hopefully, Mom it hit, hit the you fast know, forward. Did you grow up in a music family? Yeah, um, my dad played the piano, boogie woogie. My grandma, his mom, um, she uh, lived her life saying that when she retired, she was going to go play in a piano bar, and. Uh, but then when she retired, she had arthritis so bad mm. she couldn't play anymore. And her quote is, life's a jip. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That's sad. So yes. I think about her a lot when I go. I'm, I'm so lucky to be able to play these shows. And and uh, So your father played. My dad, you know, just, was just for fun. Yeah. You know, he, he, yep. was, he just played piano in the house. But uh-huh. my, my two older brothers were were and both still are playing music. My brother Jay was just at uh, the schooner on Saturday night playing with with a band called Hot Pastrami. They're really cool. And <laughs> nice. uh, um, Jimmy, he he's a singer songwriter too, and he um, he uh, he does the Mad Ripple Hoot Nanny. He hasn't done it in several months, but uh, hopefully that'll come back around again. But he's got a band too, and he plays. Do you guys get together and jam? You know, I I don't. We do just for kicks every once in a while, but um, 
like when he books us a gig up at Lutzen, it's we go up there. The gig is secondary. The the hang is more because oh yeah, they give us rooms and and so we'll sit there and, and yeah, uh, yep, and just make up songs and uh-huh. uh huh, and that's that's so much fun. But you know, jamming is like you know I don't do it that much anymore. It, it's we play so often that it's. Right. Yeah, it doesn't sell. Like you need your downtime. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, I mean, I, I wind up jamming with people, and they'll say, "Play Brown Eyed Girl." You know, I'm like, "Come on, man, really?" <laughs> you know, for the fifteen thousandth time. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's a great song, but man, it's just yeah. I don't. I play it enough, and yeah, and hear it enough. You hear that song all the time, everywhere you go. It's on music, and yeah, you do. I mean, that's one of the recognizable mm-hmm. sort of like tunes that you hear, and you're like. I know that. Yep. I got that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, uh, so <laughs> what else do you do for fun around here? I knew that was <laughs> yeah. coming. Because, because Terry, well, yeah, what, what's your, you know, I mean. I mean, music is, is I mean, you're obviously... in front of a crowd a lot, yeah. you mm-hmm. know. So, so what's your downtime look like? Oh, I love fantasy baseball. And uh, I'm thinking about podcasts I listen to. Um, I've been listening to Ram Das podcast oh, lately. I don't know that one. It's a um, just this kind of like spiritual guru guy from the 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 he lectures from the seventies and eighties and nineties. Oh, I bet Sarah would know him. Yeah, and he's a he's he's funny and he's and he's really smart. It's pretty dated, you yeah. Know, especially those seventies <laughs> ones, you know. Sure. Hell, uh, sometimes that's fun though. It is. Yeah. Like what? And this one I just listened to. He he uh, he meant, He says so. You go out and buy a car and you get yourself a rabbit. You know, remember the Volkswagen oh, yeah. rabbit? rabbit yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's pretty funny. <laughs> um, I was wondering if not. I hate to interrupt, but I was wondering oh. if you guys, uh, being that you were both much more into music than I was when I was. I just it took me a while to kind of come around to music and the way it. Anyway, uh, well, I always say that, but I like yeah. I did not experience like I was not. Yeah, into I was totally music, like music. a lot of people oh, yeah. are when they're yeah. younger. Yeah, music defined. But did you guys? Yeah. Did you guys ever? Uh, did you join BMG or whatever? Do you remember? <laughs> like, like were you like ninety nine cents? Oh, fourteen. I never fell into that. Trap. No, <laughs> although <laughs> I there was. <laughs> It just I came should, to mind. Well, I used it once to get revenge on a guy. Um, <laughs> yeah, you could order it for other people. Yeah. Yes. I, there was this guy. I was working at an airport shuttle company, and um, this guy was a jerk. He, I mean, he was parked in front of me. He had me blocked in on the upper ramp of the airport. What do you yeah. mean, airport what now? This it, is it was a, a shuttle. I drove a van to shuttle people okay, downtown yeah. and back. And, and you here in Minneapolis? To, yeah. Okay, yeah. yep. Well, he's only ever lived here in New well, York. Well, right in New York, too. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> just making sure. This was back when, when, when it, was kind of a, uh, it was kind of a status symbol to have a phone in your car. Oh, still. yeah. Mm. And uh, this guy, he, he blocked me in, parked uh, just where I couldn't get out. <laughs> And then sat there and said goodbye to his girlfriend, beautiful woman, you know, that probably bothered me too. Really, really expensive car. And yeah. I'm sitting there waiting, and waiting. did he have a phone? Well, yeah, but I mean, he wouldn't, wouldn't even acknowledge me. It wouldn't. And I was like, yeah, I, I swear I sat there for 10 minutes blocked in because of this guy. Finally, somebody behind me made it out and I had to put it in reverse oh and, my God. and back up and go around him. And that's when he decided to, oh, I'm going to get back in the car and hurry. And then he, he took off driving and then got pissed at me when I went past him. It was so unreasonable. And, and I was, and, and I, so I kind of cut him off. I mean, I, I wasn't nice about it, but I was I he deserved know, kind it. of justified. <laughs> yeah. And I pulled into uh, the parking lot uh, where we used to park, and and this guy goes past me and goes, he waves his cell phone at me. <laughs> like, Is this one of those big black ones? Uh, yeah, yeah, with a cord attached. Yeah, yeah. Don Johnson car style. Phone. They called it a <laughs> yeah. car phone, not a cell phone. <laughs> right. right, it was a car phone. Yeah. Yes. So I went back to the, uh, I was like, and I couldn't afford to lose this job. I was living, you know, <laughs> not even check to check. I was living last check to check. And, <laughs> and, um, and so I, I was really afraid I was going to lose my job over this. And I, I, I remembered there was this phone in the driver's room where 
uh, I had called to try and get my my voicemail messages, and it said enter your passcode, and I thought, oh, you know, I just remember it, it. They had the same voicemail system as I had at my house or my apartment, and um, and I I just thought maybe I can guess the passcode, and. <laughs> Oh my god! I, I went. In, I got it on the first try. <laughs> it was it was the the four four digit number of the building address. Uh huh. And easy peasy. Bang! Yeah. Got it. Here's the guy, and he's calling. I just had the worst exchange with one of your drivers. He was so rude and blah blah blah. I just and you can call me, and and my name is this, and he and I. Looked, looked up his address and I signed him up for the Columbia House Record Club. <laughs> oh my and, God. And uh, sent him a bunch of rap CDs because he did not look like the kind of guy would, that would enjoy that. And that was my revenge. <laughs> oh my God. That's very funny. That's hilarious. Go. Columbia House, BMG, whatever. The, yeah. I just, oh God. I had some friends that did that and, and they would, I, I was always too scared to do it. Yeah. Oh, because I, I was too like, smart, maybe. Well, they, they just, you know, they paid their penny, mm-hmm. and then they got, like, 14 <laughs> albums, and then they'd just be like, ah, fuck it, you know, and then they didn't pay, you know, th- nothing, and nothing happened to them. I think and, that's what happened to me. Yeah, and I was like, I was like, oh, my God, you got 14 albums for n- a penny? <laughs> a penny. <laughs> and it was, like, all true, and then I, I'd think Years about doing it. collections calls. And my parents were like, <laughs> you better not do that. Yeah. You know, and I'd be like, no. <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, your friends probably didn't have credit, you know, credit, um... Score things, Scores yeah. To try right. and protect right. this guy. I mean, we were, yeah. I mean, yeah, that guy, that guy. <laughs> and that they'd guy. send them to you too. They'd send you, oh a- yeah, albums every month, and you'd right. have to package them up and send them back again. I know, yeah, from friends that did it, and <laughs> right. really regretted it. <laughs> yes, from a friend, yes, because mm-hmm. you got the bill then too. I mean, right. they, they were yeah, re- and if you relentless. Don't, if you don't return them. You you have to pay. I right. feel like it was either myself or my a girlfriend in college or something who did it, and it was like. A nightmare. It was, a, yeah. there was there, like you say, there were things showing up all the time yeah. and bills and like, oh my God, they're going to come after us. Like, for what? Like, <laughs> for, for what? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but that was a, I mean, still. 129 bucks was a lot of money or whatever. Is that what it to, came out to be? I don't, yeah, once I don't you, know. Once you got like four months deep and you got these stupid albums oh, you never yeah. ordered sitting there and you you're don't like, know. Oh, you don't even but that initial the, one when when I had those friends that got the 14 in the mail yeah. I was oh, like yeah. oh my god yeah, and the then it was in a, the mouth uh-huh. yeah and it was a free for all because you know everyone would be like well I'll get these you get those yeah. you know and, and then, then all of a sudden it'd be this huge music collection and then bust out the TDKs bust out the TDKs exactly. that's right yep. mm-hmm. I feel like I only ever had the cheap TDKs <laughs> yeah well if you didn't what have those the, the C90s I think. yes yep. that's right yep Aww. yep that's the right. Crap, nineties, and you guys had the awesome nineties. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a that was a step up. Yep. <laughs> then there was the SAX, right? Like, right. Only for the greatest album, you know, yep. top ten albums, you'd put those on. The yeah, SAX. yeah. That's when I, that's when I busted out Rush's moving pictures, and it was like, I need quality. <laughs> <laughs> I was never a Rush fan. I had, I had a friend in college who like i mean that was for for him rush was it like that was the terry did you ever band. listen to rush i i'm i mean i've never you're been a van fan, morrison but, and, and uh, bob dylan that's not i uh i really getty lee's voice kind of drove me crazy yeah and, but then when he did the the uh, thing with bob and doug mckenzie i was a fan so. Yeah. Oh, that's right god i forgot <laughs> the about great that white north that's man right you mean really the, cool the, the hockey playing uh, no, oh no the I'm, hosers I'm, yeah yeah take off, hey, eh? hoser. yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. that's right getty lee did a, did a yes, song or he two did. with him and it was hilarious and i thought wow he doesn't take us himself as seriously as serious as, as, would, as, as music seems like yes. he would yeah it's very serious <laughs> very serious band <laughs> <laughs> they're not yucking it up no they're not. <laughs> 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 they do tend to clue in on sort of life's right. problems, don't mm, they? Yeah, in a very Canadian way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're they're nothing but serious. I don't know how we got on Rush, Terry. From <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened to any of this, and I never really do. You know, yeah, these, these podcasts are just what they are. Uh, so, so how old are your kids? If you don't mind my asking, uh, seventeen and fourteen. Okay, yeah. So, getting junior out of and freshman. Nice. Yep. Yeah. And are they musicians well. too? 
oh man, my younger kid, Pook, is an incredible pianist. Uh, just like playing all these, uh, all these, uh, you know, uh, self written compositions and just amazing. Oh, so he's the real deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Uh, now, he, Pook doesn't want to, um, be famous. Yeah. You know, I've already, I've had this conversation and, and, um, it's just not something that, uh, it holds much appeal. Um, Pook likes to hide behind the scenes a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. So, yep. Which is very cool. Yeah. Not, I don't know where he gets it. Not from his dad. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Your front stage center. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, well, that can change, too. I, I worked with kids for a long time. And not that it will, but, you know, 14, that's still... Oh boy, I was a ham when I was fourteen. I was a ham when I was twelve. <laughs> Probably, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I, I saw mean, a lot you of started kids. playing early on, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I played piano, played drums when I, Dennis the Menace drum set. You know, yep. when I was like seven or so, and then took piano lessons when I was eleven, twelve, and didn't start really trying to play guitar until I was around seventeen or eighteen. Mm-hmm. Um. I got tired of uh, trying to write songs with the guitarist in our band and just figured I've got to got to try and figure out how to do this myself. And um, although he was very good, um, it just seemed easier to, well, I'd better latch on to this somehow. Still trying to figure it out. Playing guitar, that is, or writing songs? Yes. No, playing guitar, both, but playing guitar. I mean, there are guys that are like Dan in, in our band. He's just like, wow, he can can mimic any he can figure out these he knows all the chords like the song says right. um but uh I, i'm still i'm still just kind of a hack compared to guys like him I can do enough to to get by yeah. yeah well um have you got anything that you would uh that you would like to leave people with anything you'd like to promote promote or well um you can go get all of our music on Spotify, and we don't mind a bit if you do that. It's not a bad thing. I love Spotify. When um, when we put out CDs in the 90s as Terry Walsh and 2AM, the biggest roadblock we hit was distribution. Mm-hmm. Um, and you'll hear musicians just rail against Spotify. Oh, I've got, I've got 100,000 spins, and I only made you know $20 or something. And it's just so backwards to me because first of all if you're getting 20,000 spins it's it could be one person listening you know right as opposed to if you're on a major market radio station a hundred thousand per people could hear hear it if like if the current plays one song you could get a hundred thousand people hearing it at once so there's that's it's apples to oranges right. so it it's I've even written a song about Spotify <laughs> called the musician's alibi. I mean, it's like there you hear a lot of people that'll rail against it as if that's the reason that they're not successful. And for me, it was like, wow, it, we, yeah. people are listening to us now. And that's, that's what it's all about. Really. It, it, I just read a great interview with Jeff Tweedy of Wilco. And he said pretty much the same thing. He said, what, what I, people are listening to our music and that's what we're trying to do. I don't need a guitar-shaped swimming pool, you know. Right, <laughs> right. I'd right. rather have people listening to my songs, and and so um, please listen to us on Spotify. Terry Walsh and Two AM, Saint Dominic's Trio, and the Belfast Cowboys—they're all on there. They're all on there, and uh, go listen to them and uh, enjoy. Yeah, that's totally cool. I mean, I I think you're right, though. You know, it's it's a great way to just reach your audience there. and, you and then you can play shows and yep. i mean we've had i had some people come up to us at the driftwood just about a month ago and they said yeah we're from chicago and we were taking a trip up here and we you know they heard us on just like some random playlist or something and they said we've got to go see these guys they're in minneapolis oh that's great yeah. i know yeah it's the greatest and i get i get an email from spotify once a month showing you exactly where it's been played what songs have been played 
And the cities where they're, you know, we're big in Stockholm. I don't right. you know why. I have no idea. Right. You know, people in Australia and Japan are listening to us. And it's amazing to me. I it love is. it. Just yeah. love it. It is. That's very cool. I got yeah. an email from a couple in the Netherlands looking to buy our CD. It, you know, it, it's, it, it's just wild. It breaks down that wall. It does. Well, I think that's a great way of looking at it. Because, I, I mean, there were big problems with the old system Huge problems with the old yes. system too. So, yeah. yeah, who knows? You'll you'll hear a lot of of old school musicians complaining about streaming and and you know if if I had had a major label deal and and I wanted those those royalties to keep coming in, I could see how they would be upset about it drying up. But for somebody on my level, it's a great thing and awesome. You know, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, I hope it keeps going. <laughs> it will. It looks like it's going to. And you play uh, Tuesdays at the Driftwood. Yep. Char Bar. Yep. And- Driftwood Char Bar. We play at Bunkers once a month. We play at the Hook and Ladder once a month. Those are both as full band shows. Um, crooners once in a while up in Fridley. Um, and just played at the Medina Ballroom on Saturday. And, you know, BelfastCowboys.com. You, if you want to see us, you can see us pretty much any weekend. And- yeah. Cool. We'll cool. be happy to see you. All right. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much Terry, for coming in. Thanks for coming in. This has been really fun. <laughs> cool. <laughs> thanks. Got it it is. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Take care. Bye. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. We love comments and feedback, so go ahead and let us have it. If you'd like to learn more about Andalyn, and other legacy projects, visit the website at andalin.app or kineticlegacy.us. Take care.